Well, as we get closer to the holiday weekend, there's a push to save lives and encourage boater safety. Eight on your side's Marco Villarreal is live this morning um, on a boat talking about some boater safety. You got your life vest on. Looks like you're ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to have a good time, and I haven't had a good time. What a Wednesday to wake up this morning and be out here in Tampa Bay uh, enjoying the water, but we're doing things safely and we have the holiday weekend that's coming up a lot of people are going to be heading out on their boats or their jet skis and we want them to be safe and so joining me now is Tampa Police Officer Craig Baker uh, good morning officer we were talking a little bit about making sure you have the right stuff on your boat before you even get out in the water right correct yes <clears throat> uh, just want to make sure you have all your required safety gear by United States Coast Guard requirements okay uh, life jackets uh, type 4 throwable device which we have here um, flares for good you know signaling device sound producing device a horn or a whistle and also a fire extinguisher is very important to have on boats. And, and do that all before you get into the water, that way you don't have to... That's correct. Yeah, just do a preliminary, preliminary check before you go out in the water, that way you know you have it. And you were also saying it's super important to make sure that you listen to Lee Span and her weather forecast before you head out for the Absolutely. Uh, we know these storms will pop up here in Tampa Bay, and believe it or not, the, Tampa, the bay will get rough and get you know choppy, and we have smaller boats that will actually capsize, and you know we respond to those calls fairly regularly. So check the forecast. You know, if you see a storm popping up, just get somewhere safe. If you got to go into a marina, um, you know, go to an island, somewhere safe to get out of the weather for until the time being. You know, Florida, the weather passes quick. Yeah, it really does. All right, good stuff. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Officer Baker. So there you go, Avery. Uh, just a, a couple quick tips there to make sure you're ready to go before you head out on the boat uh, this weekend. And one other thing we should mention, Avery, is the Tampa Bay Lightning are going to be right here there tonight, it is. 8 p.m. and Officer Baker, you got a prediction for tonight? Four to two bolts. Oh, go bolts. There you have it, Avery. Four to two bolts tonight. You heard it here first. Go bolts. And now, Marco, if only we could just kind of convince him to let us stay on this boat right there, get a TV up, and yeah. watch the bolts game on the water. Can we make that Avery happen? Avery wants to know, can we tailgate on this boat? Can we just put up a TV and hang out here tonight? That sounds good to me. I think it'd be a good time. <laughs> yeah. We'll make yeah. sure we do it safe. I'm sure Love Officer it. Baker's bosses will be all right with that. Yeah, yeah, they're fine. They're fine. Bolts Nation. All right, thanks so much, Marco. Have fun. Bolts Nation. <laughs> Amy's on your side helping the local senior cut through the red tape. Ken Jones is selling his home and surrounding property to a developer, but a clash with code enforcement kept it from going through. Hillsborough County cited Jones for the pile of junk in his front yard and the grass overgrowth. The pending violation is holding up the sale. Literally, there is a, there is a cleanup crew and a bulldozer crew on go when ink is on paper, this place will be leveled. So our crews reached out to the county to clear things up, and a rep got back to us saying as soon as the property is sold, the case will be closed. Time is just about 737, and eight is on your side, and we continue to work to get results for a Pinellas County woman. She paid a $1,500 deposit to take a trip with a photography club, but when she couldn't go, she was then told she'd get the money back. Okay, we'll send you your deposit four to six weeks. Yeah, it's during COVID times. Everything is kind of odd, four to six weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, and still no refund. No refund. The executive director says he received a partial refund, but hasn't been able to give it to Jackie McCurdy because he didn't have her contact info. Well, guess what? We gave it to him and we're going to stay on top of this story to make sure she gets her money back. Well, the results are in and Cam Anthony of Team Blake is your new voice champion. He beat out Tampa Bay's Kenzie Wheeler, who came in second place. And while the Dover native did not take home the trophy, he says he's truly grateful to have even made it to the finale. Watching The Voice, you know, it's always been a dream of mine, but I never really thought that I could even have the ability to come on the show and make it this far. It's just, you know, so amazing. And I can't thank America enough for putting me in this position. You know, I'm just so humbled and honored to be here. Kenzie's parents tell Eight on Your Side he'll be coming home sometime today. And you know what, when he returns home, He'll be returning to one proud hometown. Hundreds of people showed up to cheer him on during a watch party in Plant City. Look at that crowd. And of course, his proud parents were right there in the middle of it. He did amazing. He put his whole heart into this. And I was just, or we were ecstatic just to see him standing up on that stage yep. with the four other contestants. But he took the risk, he took the adventure, and there's no greater, there's no greater gift. Yep. He, learned, he learned a lot from it. It was a good experience, very good learning experience, you know. And, and it was actually Kenzie's mom who signed him up to audition for the show. The season of The Voice might be over, but we are pretty sure his journey is just getting started. Picture oh. this, Lee. 
big crowds at the Florida Amphitheater just rocking out to Kenzie Wheeler on stage. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's definitely gonna happen. And my goodness, he looks just like his mom. I'm glad that she was the one who put him in to get the voice because he was, I mean, stellar through the entire performances. So we're glad to see him and see what happens to him as we move forward. 72 degrees right now. Whew, it's bright. It's bright in Polk County. Now the sun is up, which means the temperatures are going up from here. 80 degrees at 10, 85 at noon, 90 at 2, 93 I guess, and then 91 at 4 p.m. So temperatures are going to run just slightly above average, but let's hope that it is just as hot inside Emily Arena. That puck drops tonight at 8, so you're leaving work today. It's already going to be 90. Maybe you're just going to head straight to wherever you're going to watch the game. By 7 p.m., it's a bit more humid than the past couple of evenings, but no rain expected. 86 at 7, of course, puck drops at 8. So at 9 o'clock, it's 82, even toward the end of the game. It's dry and quiet, but it's still warm at right around 80. So temperatures throughout the next couple of days are going to be going up, but humidity is also going to be going up. And that actually will eventually lead to some rain chances, which we need. We don't have any rain today or tomorrow. We have a 20% chance Saturday, 30% Sunday. We're going to check back in with traffic on the 8th. Hey, Lee, it's heating up outside, but things are cooling and calming down on Bay Area roads, which makes me happy because I get to show you pretty things like this. This is the Howard Franklin Bridge where it is smooth sailing, no issues there, and really no problems at all on any of our Bay Area bridges this morning. Now, my friends in Manatee County and Pinellas County, take a look over the Sunshine Skyway, 11 minutes either direction. The one issue we are seeing pop up is in Pasco County. It's going to be US 19 and Fox Hollow Drive. There's a reported crash there, but the good news, no delays so far in that area. Going to send it over to you. All right, thanks so much, Beth. The Bay Area Dunkin' Donuts employee punches a customer and kills him. Still ahead, what we're learning about the 77-year-old victim. Plus, bringing diversity to your child's classroom. How a program at USF is changing education in Tampa Bay and how it's helping kids of all backgrounds take the next step when it comes to learning.
Saxons Furniture. You're watching News Channel 8 today on Great 38 with Avery Cotton, David Espinosa Hall, Deanne King Traffic, and meteorologist Lee Spann. We now know the name of the man police say died after being punched by a Dunkin' Donuts worker in Tampa. Court documents say 77-year-old Vanell Cook got into an argument with Corey Pujols three weeks ago. Police believe Cook called Pujols a racial slur before he punched him in the jaw. Cook died two days later. Pujols is charged with manslaughter. Well, only 2% of teachers nationwide are black men, yet black and brown students make up more than half of the student population. And that right there is exactly why the University of South Florida, St. Pete campus and Pinellas County Schools are launching a program that will put more black men in the classroom. Deanne King tells us about the Call Me Mr. program in this week's For the Culture. The Call Me Mr. program is exclusively for black men. The misters will learn how to effectively teach in urban schools using a culturally inclusive curriculum. And after graduation, the misters are guaranteed a job within the Pinellas County School District. Sometimes it's um, African-American males in particular are painted in a pejorative way. So this is a way to for students to um, actually flip the script. Dr. Brenda Walker is the interim associate dean of the College of Education at USF St. Pete. I can remember when I first um, came here as assistant professor, the students in my own classes here that said I was the first African-American teacher they ever had. And then when you talk about male teachers, it's even worse. That's the case nationwide. Per the Department of Education, 20% of teachers are people of color and only 2% are black men. The Pinellas County School District statistics mirror those. Only 9% of their teachers are people of color, 2% are black men. We know that representation matters, right? We know that students need to be able to see themselves in their teachers. They need to be able to see themselves in the curriculum that's taught in the classroom. That's why the Pinellas County School District and USF St. Pete have teamed up. In the fall, black men attending USF St. Pete and wanting to be teachers can join the Call Me Mr. program. This aims to put more black male teachers in schools. They'll be teaching in urban classrooms, urban and working with students, um, in urban communities as well as um, families, children and families living in poverty. Studies show same race teachers equal higher achievement and graduation rates. But less referrals in the classroom when there's teachers that look like them, more recommendations for advanced courses and gifted studies when there's teachers that look like them. Leaving a lasting impact in the community many of these misters were raised in. Now, the program is offered for undergrads and graduate students and their scholarships for those interested. For more details, head on over to our website, WFLA.com. I'm Deanne King, 8 on your side. Well, things are looking up at Orlando's airport this Wednesday morning. Orlando, Orlando International Reps say Memorial Day travel. It's expected to be back to pre-pandemic numbers. Now, in 2019, 70,000 passengers traveled through that airport on Memorial Day. In 2020, that number was just 12,000. This year, they are expecting close to 65,000. That's a 550% increase from last year. Now, as people pre prepare to travel this weekend, healthcare officials are warning it's important to keep taking precautions against COVID-19. They say this, even if you've been vaccinated, it's best to hold your gatherings outside. Also, continue to wear masks on public transportation and on planes, and continue to wash your hands frequently. We should really think about how good we have it right now. Where we are right now is a very good place. And think about why we've gotten here. Okay, well, the CDC says people who are not vaccinated should stay home. But if they do travel, they should get tested for COVID-19 before and after traveling. And they should socially distance themselves from those they don't live with. 748 on the dot. Let's check in with Lee Spann. Yeah, we check in first with Max Defender 8. Where? Yeah. Clean and clear this morning. No rainfall out there. Barely any clouds. One thing you may notice. It's a little bit more humid, but not bad. 70 degrees in Lakewood Ranch right now, and we were able to see at least a partial lunar eclipse thanks to JC Baker who sent in this picture on Twitter. It's fading. It's fading away. We got about halfway before that moon set, and so that's why we can only see the look. We could have only seen the total lunar eclipse from the West Coast. It's 74 in Tampa. Palm Harbor, you're checking in this morning at 71, 66 in Valrico. Also 66 in Lakeland and Northport, you're at 67. So this morning's really the best time to get some exercise. It feels nice. Mid 70s around 8 a.m., but then mid 80s by lunchtime and the afternoon highs in the low 90s. Now, no rain is expected, but the slightly higher humidity will make it slowly cool down. So we're still at 86 degrees at 7. Like I said, not quite as crisp, but still comfortable this morning. Heating up quick and 
staying dry today. We'll get that nice breeze off the Gulf of Mexico. Partly cloudy through the early evening and then mostly clear skies overnight into tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning is going to start out clear and mild. But winds start really coming out of the south tomorrow. So it's going to be slightly more humid tomorrow. Still warm, still dry tomorrow. Really putting us in that higher fire danger for either in the higher, very high category for today from the Florida uh, Forestry Division. But eventually the rain comes once we add in that moisture. We keep it hot and humid through Memorial Day weekend. Upper 80s, 30% rain chances Sunday and Monday. Let's check in and see what traffic's doing now. Lee, I think I jinxed us. We made it through that deadly crash on I-275 southbound, and now there are a number of things popping on Bay Area roads, so stick with me on this one. The first one I want to tell you about is in Gibsonton, I-75 northbound and Big Bend Road. Florida Highway Patrol is reporting a crash with injuries and a roadblock, and it's having major delays for you. You can see from Big Bend Road to Gibsonton is where the problem is. That's going to take you almost 10 minutes. Now, if we head to St. Petersburg in Pinellas County, there's a crash there as well, right as you're trying to get on the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, but we're going to look at those travel times. We come right back on Great 38. An unforgettable day for 600 Hillsborough County students was made extra special for a mother who lost her son in a car accident. 16-year-old Carlos Medina was killed back in January of 2020 on Davis Islands. To honor him, the school presented his mother with a diploma with his name. She says she's incredibly grateful to the school for giving her this reminder of how much Carlos was loved. Oh my God, I feel like a he walking next to me. This is what I feel and when I look up, I know He's jumping and dancing and say, I did it, Mama. Now, during the ceremony, Carlos was also acknowledged by the class president who called him bright, funny, and the best AP chemistry lab partner he could have asked for. There's still another hour to go in terms of live local news, weather, and traffic to come, so stick around. And as we send you to break, here's a look at the lunar eclipse happening over Los Angeles, California. We'll be right back.
Triple Day Sale. Now on News Channel 8 Update. Good morning, it's 7.56. We're live right now on News Channel 8 and Great 38. And here's one of the stories that we're working on for you on this Wednesday. New information this morning after someone was shot along the river walk over the weekend. Tampa police say they've identified all persons of interest seen on surveillance video at the time of the shooting. There's still no word on if those people are facing any charges. Turning to your weather, let's go to Max Defender 8 Meteorologist Lee Span. Good morning. Good morning, and it is a beautiful start to this day. 72 degrees in Newport Ritchie. Now it is a little bit more humid with a pretty light wind. Now that slightly higher humidity means we didn't cool down as much overnight. So it's 76 in Tampa, 67 Zephyr Hills, 67 in Sebring, and 72 in Sarasota. And when you look at the 24 hour temperature change, we're about two to five degrees warmer right now than this time yesterday. And we're going to be toasty in the afternoon at 91. Just a few clouds, no rain expected today, even more humid tomorrow. And that higher humidity eventually leads to some rain chances. Now let's check in on traffic. Hey, Lee, I-275 southbound is up and running again following that deadly crash. However, now we have another crash in Gibsonton causing major delays on your morning commute. It's I-75 northbound and Big Bend Road. If I go ahead and pull up your drive times for you, you can see, well, actually it started to clear up just a little bit, but I would still add on just a couple of extra minutes for you as you head out for your morning commute if you're in that area. Now, there are a number of other issues popping on Bay Area Road, so I'll have those for you over on Great 38. In the meantime, time going to send it over to you and for more live news weather and traffic watch right down WTTA we're live again on grade 38 starting right now the channels are on your screen Bye. This is News Channel 8 Today on Great 38 on your side. Good morning. Welcome to News Channel 8 Today on Great 38 at 8. I'm Avery Cotton. And I'm David Espinosa Hall. Let's get right to it in terms of Wednesday's top stories. First, summer test cruises right here in the Bay Area. We're going to show you what that means exactly for those of us itching to take that cruise. And then quit dumping trash in our neighborhood. Neighbors say all this garbage has got to go. We'll show you who's helping them clean up today. And speaking of go, let's go back outside for this quick live look on this Wednesday morning. And now it's time for weather. Max Offender 8's Lee Spain. Yeah, this morning it is 758 and we are actually looking over on the west coast of the United States. This is a live picture right now. The lunar, the total lunar eclipse has ended and there's some clouds here. This is again from the, the Los Angeles area, but we are now in the latter part of the partial eclipse. And of course, those are the clouds obscuring it from that particular viewpoint, but we, there it goes. <laughs> but earlier, about 10 or 15, 20 minutes ago, the moon was bright red. That's what happens during a total lunar eclipse. And then as you go to those partial eclipse, it looks like someone's just kind of carving out the moon. That's what we actually got to see the partial eclipse, but not this, not the, not the total lunar eclipse. Right now, Max of Interate, though, showing us that we are dry and we are clear. And we're warming up fast. It's 76 degrees already in Tampa right now. You're feeling it. 71 in Brooksville, Lakeland, you're at 72, 70 in Venice. My fantastic scale today, not bad at all. It's going to be a great day, not a perfect day. It's going to get a 7 out of 8 because of that higher humidity. And it's going to feel hot today at 91. We'll talk more about high temperatures into the weekend and weather and traffic on the 8s. But I know Beth has been keeping up with all the crashes. There's a lot going on and there has been all morning long. Let's go ahead and start out in Gibsonton. Hello to all my friends there. You're dealing with a crash on I-75 northbound near Big Bend Road. Florida Highway Patrol says that crash does have a roadblock, so plan ahead for that when you're getting ready to head out. Now, if we go on over to Pinellas County, another crash we're talking about, I-275 south on at mile marker 15. That's going to be right as you head onto the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Florida Highway Patrol saying that there is a roadblock involved with this crash. However, you can see not affecting your drive times over the bridge. Either way, it's going to take you less than 15 minutes. Going to send it over to you, Avery. Well, this morning, a return to cruising after 15 long months. Royal Caribbean has been given the green light from the CDC to start operating test cruises this summer. Aid on your sides, Megan Gannon joins us live from Port Tampa Bay with the latest. This is big news, Megan. Yeah, Avery, you know, it's really big news and of course, welcome news for this industry after being hit so hard by the pandemic. Unfortunately, though, those test cruises, they're not going to be sailing out of the Port Tampa Bay here. They're actually going to be sailing out of Miami. Royal Caribbean tweeting this message Tuesday night. After 15 months of hard work and collaboration, Royal Caribbean has received CDC approval for simulated cruises on Freedom of the Seas in June. This is the latest promising step to return to sailing in the U.S. We look forward to seeing our crew and loyal guests this summer. 
Now we know the test crews are set to begin in either late June or early July. And under the CDC guidelines, each practice cruise will run two to seven days and must have enough passengers to meet at least 10% of the ship's capacity. Volunteers must be 18 years and older and either fully vaccinated or free of medical conditions that would put them at high risk for COVID-19. The ship operator must tell passengers that they are simulating untested safety measures and that sailing during a pandemic is an inherently risky activity. We also know that Royal Caribbean is in the process of making sure all of their workers are vaccinated. Just last week, they were vaccinating a crew over in Port Canaveral. And of course, we're told they're going to continue to do that over the next month. Avery. So Megan, I know Florida is banning those so-called vaccine passports we've been talking about, but I'm curious, how will the cruise line know if passengers are vaccinated? Yeah, Avery, you know, that's a really good question and definitely something we're looking into. But at this moment, it's really unclear how they're going to be able to know or tell or show proof that the people aboard the ship have been vaccinated. According to a report from the Miami Herald, they did reach out to Royal Caribbean. However, uh, the company has declined to comment on that issue at this time. Yeah, we'll see how, how they handle that. But this really is a big step forward in getting uh, cruises back sailing here from our state. Thanks, Megan. Time is 803, a new progress in the push to get more Americans vaccinated against COVID-19. The CDC is now saying half of all Americans who are 18 years or older are fully vaccinated. That's nearly 130 30 million people. And then when it comes to children who are at least 12 years old, CDC is reporting that rate at about 46.8%. The news comes as President Biden pushes forward with his goal of having 70% of all adults getting at least one dose of the vaccine by July 4th. Moderna is planning to seek approval for its COVID-19 vaccine in teenagers in early June. This news comes after Moderna reps claim that their vaccine is about 100% effective in a study of 12 to 17 year olds. Right now, the Pfizer vaccine is the only approved shot for children in that specific age range. Well, an eight month old New York boy is making vaccine history. Enzo Mancola is the youngest in the world to receive two doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine as part of a uh, clinical trial. His parents, who are both doctors, say Enzo did not have any reaction nor side effects from either shot, and they hope this will convince parents to get their children vaccinated when it's available. Eventually, the vaccine is going to be here, and if we can help ease any fellow parents' worries to say, hey, this vaccine's safe, this vaccine was easy, um, and he did great with it, and if that can encourage other parents to vaccinate their children, that's exactly what we want to have happen. Enzo is one of 16 babies involved in the clinical trial for children who are between the ages of six months and two years old. 804 now and a vote on masks in schools in Manatee County will happen on Friday. That's the last day after this, the day after the last day of class. District leaders are considering a new measure making face masks optional in schools. Right now, FAA and NTSB investigators are on their way to investigate a deadly crash involving firefighter involving a firefighter helicopter. So this happened in Leesburg, which is in Lake County. The Black Hawk chopper with four people on board crashed during a training exercise. Authorities say they have not found any survivors. Today in Eastern Polk County, the community there, they're finally going to see some release. They may see some relief rather from a trashy problem. People who live in Point Siena say the trash is piling up and they want something done. Eight is on your side, so we visited the community and found everything from mattresses to plants, even a boat dumped and dumped illegally. We've just noticed within the last year since we've moved here, just an uproar in the amount of trash being dumped um, just in our communities, and uh, it's getting worse and worse. The Polk County Sheriff believes Point Siena is vulnerable to illegal dumping because of all the construction going on in that area. Our dumping is worse right now than it normally is because subcontractors rather than take stuff to the dump when they finish a job they pull off into a wooded area such as this and throw it out. Today the sheriff's office is organizing an effort to start cleaning up the piles of trash. Time is 8.05 and an urgent plea this Wednesday morning to boaters to slow down and save marine life. This comes from the Clearwater Marine Aquarium just days before the busy Memorial Day holiday when many people can get out and enjoy the water. Avery's taking a look right now why it's so critical for boaters to be alert. Yeah, David, this is why. Look at this. This is Crunch. Crunch is a green sea turtle found with a gash in a shell, and it was caused by a boat strike. The Clearwater Marine Aquarium nursed him back to health and later released him, but they say he's just one of many turtles found in the waters off the Gulf Coast injured by a boat. In fact, the aquarium says in 2020, it treated 11 sea turtles with injuries caused by a boat. And it's not just turtles either. According to the FWC, manatees and dolphins are also at risk. 
It says nearly 20% of all manatee deaths so far this year in Florida were caused by boaters. So now the Clearwater Marine Aquarium is urging boaters to obey speed zones and no wake zones and just be on the lookout for marine life. Also in the water this Wednesday morning, a new statue honoring a fallen veteran who sprung to action during the Coast Guard's worst peacetime tragedy in history. 40 years ago, the Coast Guard cutter Blackthorn hit an oil tanker and sank in Tampa Bay. 23 crew members died, including seaman apprentice William Flores. But Flores accomplished one last heroic act by releasing life jackets for anyone to grab onto. Several of his shipmates have indicated that uh, but for those uh, life jackets that came to the surface in the water, they would have perished. The Flores statue now resides in the Circle of Heroes, located 10 miles off the coast of Clearwater. His statue is the 13th to be added, and when it's complete, it will have 24 statues in total from all branches of the armed forces. That is incredible. What a story there, Lee. Beautiful. It's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful tribute. And uh, we certainly thank him for his service and thanks to his brother for telling that story. As we take a look right now along the Veterans Expressway in Tampa, yeah, it's beautiful out there. Blue skies right around 73 degrees, but it's going to get hot today. 91 specifically in Tampa. How about Bartow? 93 today. It'll be 94 in Arcadia, 91 in Lakewood Ranch. Maybe right along the coast a little bit cooler due to that sea breeze that comes off the Gulf of Mexico. But today's temperatures are slightly above average, and I want to talk more about these averages. Remember, we've talked about this a couple of times in the last couple of weeks. We've gotten a new 30 year average. We update that every 10 years. So now the 30 year average goes from 1991 to 2020. So today is the first day that the average high is 90 and we stay there through June 11th. But now for the first time we have average highs at 91 between June 12th and September 14th. We have a 90 degree high between September 15th and September 25th. So between now and September 25th, the average high is 90 or higher. And today we're going to be a little bit above that average of 90 by 91, but then we're back to 90 Thursday, Friday. What happens is we add more clouds, a little bit higher humidity and a couple of showers. We bring our highs down to 89 Saturday and 88 degrees on Sunday. So let's see what's happening on the roads now, Beth. Hey, Lee, it's been a busy morning, but we've been getting through it together. I want to start out for my friends in Pasco County, Port Ritchie specifically. There's a crash on US 19 in Fox Hollow Drive. Now they are clearing that out of the way at this point. Shouldn't be much longer, but just keep in mind you are going to see that as you head out the door this morning. Back here in Hillsborough County, some more good news. In Gibsonton, they are clearing off the scene of a crash on I-75 northbound near Big Bend Road. There was a roadblock in that area, not there anymore. So the other area that we're seeing issues with is our typical trouble area on I-4. You can see it near the I-75 junction there. So let's take a look at your drive times. If you're headed westbound into downtown Tampa, you can see the issue right here. It's I-75 to downtown. Going to take you over 15 minutes this morning. Going to send it over to you. Time is 809 and don't forget you can give the gift of life by donating blood at the 8 on your side blood drive. That's on Friday. This big, the big red bus will be at select Boston Market and around the Bay Area. Donors, you guys are going to get a $20 e-gift card, a sunshade, also a $5 bonus card for Boston Market. You can make a reservation at WFLA.com slash blood drive. Still to come from hiking to grilling out, we are day tripping in the Bay Area. We're going to take you live to a local park that you may want to try out this summertime. Also, a really cool light show at the Eiffel Tower. Find out how this display could change the future of electricity as a whole. First, here's a live look outside of downtown Tampa looking great on this Wednesday. You're watching News Channel 8 today. Great 38.
You're watching News Channel 8 Today with Avery Cotton, David Espinosa Hall, Dean King Traffic, and meteorologist Lee Span. Welcome back. New York prosecutors have convened a special grand jury to consider evidence in a criminal investigation into former President Donald Trump. David has a breakdown of what we're learning about this case so far. Yes, indeed. So the investigation is centered around the former president's business dealings. The Manhattan DA is looking into a wide variety of allegations, including hush money payments paid to women on Trump's behalf, improper property valuations, and also tax write-offs. Then there's this, this off-the-books employee compensation. That's part of that as well. The investigation into the Trump Organization has been going on for two years and was recently upgraded from a civil to a criminal investigation. Trump has denied any wrongdoing, calling this investigation a political witch hunt. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden and Russia's Vladimir Putin have agreed to meet next month in Geneva. That face-to-face -face meeting will happen at the end of President Biden's first trip aboard, abroad rather, on June 16th. The agenda is expected to include discussions of Russian action in the Ukraine, efforts by both nations to stem the coronavirus pandemic, and much more. 814 now and today people in Ohio will have a shot at becoming a millionaire. The state is announcing its first winners of its Vax a million lottery. So a vaccinated adult will win $1 million and a vaccinated teenager. Hello, will win a full ride scholarship to a state university. State health officials say they've seen a big jump in the number of people wanting to get vaccinated since the lottery was announced. All right, so Japan now plans to offer coronavirus vaccinations to athletes and others connected to the upcoming Olympic Games. Pfizer is providing free vaccines to about 20,000 people. Japan's Olympic minister said athletes, officials and various staff members will get the shots. The country is battling COVID-19 outbreaks just two months before the Tokyo Games begin. Time is 815 and the Pope is about to get a new set of wheels and they're going to be eco friendly. The Los Angeles based Fisker Inc says that they will provide a Pope mobile that runs completely on electricity. The SUV will have a solar roof and carpets made of recycled plastic bottles from the ocean. For the first time in history, the Eiffel Tower is being lit up using electricity produced from renewable hydrogen. Look at this. These lights are powered by zero emission electrohydrogen generators. The company that built them says if renewable hydrogen tech continues to develop, we could reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 20% by 2050. Eight on your side is exploring day trip destinations, and this week we're sharing ideas to keep your family entertained this summer. This morning, Eight on your side's Brianna Villegas is live in Plant City. Tell us about where you're at, uh, Brianna. In a tree, it looks like. Hi, I am at Edward Medard Conservation Park, and I want to show you this really, really cool tree. So park officials tell me kids love to climb on the branches here, and they just spend hours exploring little pockets of nature just like this one. And all throughout the park, you can also find hiking trails that go throughout all of the trees as well. You can also find a trail named the Singing Bluffs where you can watch birds and listen to them sing. There's also a boat ramp where you can bring your own boat to fish and rent canoes with the kids. There's a disc golf course for those who love throwing around a frisbee. You can camp out, spike a volleyball around or fire up the grill with some burgers. Park officials say they love how the connection with nature here helps families relax for a little bit. This is a real gem in the Plant City area, the East part of Hillsborough County. It's a 1200 acre park with a 700 acre reservoir. Um, just all kinds of really cool recreational opportunities here from camping and kayaking to bird watching. Edward Medard Conservation Park is open from 8 in the morning until 7 p.m. and it is only two bucks per car to enter. In Plant City, I'm Brianda Villegas, 8 on your side. All right, thanks so much, Brianda. Lee, a lot of kids would love to climb a tree like that. That tree is impressive. It really is. I mean, it looks like its own personal jungle gym provided by Mother Nature. So, yes, Brianda looks like she's enjoying it a little bit herself. And right now, some folks are enjoying the beautiful white sand beaches at St. Pete Beach at 75. The water is calm. It is a little warmer out there this morning, not by much. And it's just letting us know that, we, that that higher humidity came in. It's not uncomfortable. It's just not as cool and refreshing as it's been recently. You're about four degrees warmer than yesterday in Brooksville. Only a degree warmer in Sarasota and Tampa. Four degrees warmer in Bartow. It's going to feel pretty toasty by the afternoon, though. We hit 91 degrees. Just a few passing clouds. And maybe you're heading out to the Rays game. We might have lost the streak yesterday, which means we have to start a new winning streak tonight. So go cheer them on against the Royals. 7-10 is that start. So as you're walking into the trot, light breeze, 86. Even when you're heading home after the game, 
it's only slowly going to cool down about 82 degrees at that point. So what happens today? We're still dry. High pressure is close enough to us, keeping the humidity on the lower side for this time of the year. But once we head into the end of the week and high pressure moves farther out into the Atlantic, the clockwise winds around that high start to build the moisture from the south. It touches off maybe a 10% rain chance on Friday, but once we head into Saturday, rain chance goes up to 20%. We go into Sunday, it's a 30% chance. So we're really getting back into what we would really consider more of a summer pattern right about the time that we're heading into the unofficial start to summer, which is that Memorial Day weekend. So expect it to be hot, expect it to be humid, and just expect a couple of showers. Now, I don't even expect that for today. Low rain chances all the way through Friday. Once we add in those 30% rain chances for Sunday and Monday, afternoon highs will be in the upper 80s. And then as the rain chances go down a bit to the middle of next week, yeah, those highs get back closer to 90. So now we're going to check on traffic on the ace bed. Hey, Lee, we cleared one away in Pasco County and now we got another one. This one is in Holiday. It's a crash at US 19 and Tahitian Garden Circle. You can see where the delays are building. That's because Florida Highway Patrol says that there is a roadblock in the area. Not going to send you down 518 just yet, but stick with me because we could get to that point depending on how those delays build. Now in Polk County, there is a crash on westbound Polk Parkway right around mile marker 5. However, no delays associated with that, but I'm going to keep an eye on it in case we start to see delays build in that area. Now, if you're getting on I-4 in Polk County, things look pretty good except for right here, State Road 559 to Kathleen Road. That's a pretty significant delay that you're seeing there. It'll take you just about 20 minutes just to get through that portion, but then I-4 westbound headed towards Tampa really clears up for you. Gonna send it over to you. So much Beth. Well, coming up, a woman climbs into a monkey enclosure at a zoo, and that changes her life. We'll show you how. Stick with us. You're watching News Channel 8 today on Great 38. It's 820.
All right, so you can file this under what was she thinking? Video from Texas shows a zoo visitor sitting on a rock, and this is inside the spider monkey enclosure. The zoo's director says the woman hopped a fence, climbed through bushes, dropped down into a four foot deep moat, all to reach the primates here. And this morning, we're hearing this incident cost her her job at a law firm. It calls her behavior reckless, and the zoo is also planning to press charges. And a guy who used a lighter to steal a puppy is on the loose this morning in Polk County. Auburndale police looking for this man here suspected of stealing a $2,000 pup from Pet World. Officials tell Aid on Your Side he used the lighter to melt zip ties, securing the puppy's cage. Well, the program in the Bay Area is offering to teach black men to be teachers, then guaranteeing them a job. We're going to share the details in today's For the Culture Report. Also, we may be looking at a busy holiday weekend on the water, right? Coming up, eight is on your side. We're live helping you and your family members stay safe and sound this Memorial Day. Weather and traffic on the eights in about three minutes. We'll be right back. Done. Now, a News Channel 8 update. It's 27 on this Wednesday. We're live right now on News Channel 8 and Great 38. Let's get right to today's Max Defender 8 forecast with Lee Fan. Yeah, it's a gorgeous morning out there. This is a look along I-4 right there at the Florida Polytechnic University in Lakeland where it's 75 degrees and you can bet it's going to get hot from here on out. We're going to hit 91 in Lakeland later today, 91 in Tampa, but 92 in Bartow, 94 in Arcadia. A little bit cooler right along the coast with that sea breeze. 
Slightly higher humidity today, still lots of sunshine as the humidity builds. Rain chances return just afternoon showers for the holiday weekend. Now we'll check in with traffic. Lee, busy morning on Bay Area roads. A couple things popping right now, now none of them causing significant delays. We've got this crash on I-275 southbound as you head on to the Skyway Bridge from Pinellas County. Again, nothing too, too serious there. Back here in Hillsborough County, there is going to be a crash as well on State Road 60 in Valrico, so keep that in mind as you head out the door. And and then the other issue that we're seeing clear up is on I-75 northbound in Gibsonton. That crash has cleared. We're going to take a look at your drive times when we get back on Great 38. But in the meantime, going to send it over to you. For more live news, weather and traffic, watch right now on WTTA. We're live again on Great 38 in about one minute. Bye. This is News Channel 8 Today on Great 38 on your side. And welcome back to News Channel 8 Today on Great 38. I'm David Espinoza Hall. And I'm Avery Cotton. Did you see this morning's super blood moon? Well, it was the start of a lunar eclipse. The only full one we'll see this year. Now, we couldn't see it here in Florida because it reached its peak when the sun was already out. But this is what they saw on the West Coast. Well, they saw something pretty on the West Coast, that's for sure. Let's check in with these <laughs> So here's the thing. Okay, they didn't so see us. Well, they, didn't know. they did not. So we call it a super blood moon because it's super, meaning that it's the closest full moon to Earth. Okay. So that's what looks bigger and brighter to okay. begin with. And then during that lunar eclipse, where they could see it on the West Coast, mm -hmm. it turns a bright red color as opposed to going completely dark. Now, what we saw was a partial lunar eclipse, and that was where we started notching out some of that full moon. So we got to see the partial eclipse. We didn't get to see necessarily the full blood <laughs> moon. I think this is what we probably actually saw. I think that's what this view is because that was about as much as we could see before the sun and before it set over the horizon. And this is more what they saw on the west coast where just as the last little bit of light kind of ends from the, you know, the earth moves between the earth and the sun, then the whole moon turns this blood red color. So that's why it is the super blood moon. Things, fun things we get to see. Sadly, we couldn't see all of it here on the East Coast, but we got some video from the West Coast for you. So there's Max Defender 8, where the skies were nice and clear for you to be able to see at least the partial lunar eclipse. 74 degrees, sun, sun rays are coming down in Apollo Beach right now, and it's starting to really heat up fast. We're already at 72 in Venice, 73 in Winter Haven. You're at 70 in Inverness. Most of us are a good bit warmer than this time yesterday by a degree or so, up to about four degrees warmer. When you have higher humidity, you're a little bit warmer in the morning, but it's still nice. 75 degrees this morning. We go to 80 at 10. So yes, already quite warm at one o'clock today, partly cloudy and 87. And then our high temperature today, 91. That should happen around 4 p.m. No rain is expected. Slowly cooling down. Still 86 degrees at 7. Right about 7 o'clock, you'll be getting ready to watch the lightning game, right? So I'll have that forecast for you in weather and traffic on the 8s. But first, let's get you out in the roadways this morning. Yeah, got to make it through your morning commute before you can get to the big game. You're going to see some issues as you head out on the roads this morning. Let's start you out here in Hillsborough County. Valrico, there's a crash on Brandon Boulevard. No delays associated with that, but don't be surprised if you see some flashing lights in the area. We've got a crash that has just cleared in Gibsonton, I-75 northbound. That was causing big delays delays earlier this morning right near Big Bend Road. Not an issue anymore. However, that doesn't mean we're not seeing some delays as you head in the river 
Riverview area up north 75. You can see specifically State Road 60 to I-4 is going to take you a little bit longer. Now there are some issues we're dealing with in Pinellas and Pasco. I'll talk to you about those in weather and traffic on the 8th. Going to send Thanks it over to you, Avery. Avery. Beth, thank you. It's already Wednesday, so you might be planning ahead for the holiday weekend. And one of the best parts of living in the Bay Area is enjoying the water while out on a boat. But you do need to make sure you are behaving responsibly. And Aid on Your Side's Marco Villarreal is live with police this morning on a boat, showing us what we need to know before we hit the water. Hey, Marco. Hey, Avery, good way of putting that. We got to be behaving when we're out there having a good time uh, this week. And it is also, by the way, National Safe Boating Week. And I'm joined now with Officer uh, uh, Craig here. And you've been talking all morning long. We've talked briefly about making sure you have all the right equipment on the boat, right? Right. And then, but we were talking about BUIs. You guys are going to be on the lookout for that this weekend. And if you're out there, don't try to hide it from you guys if you're drinking and, and getting out of control, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, no more clues can, can let us know, you know, hey, there might be a problem with the operator uh, going too fast in a slow speed zone. Uh, you know, just the zigzagging of the boat, stuff like that we can pick up on. And then we can do a further investigation to determine if the operator is impaired. Yeah, what, what kind of stuff is that can, can you guys do? Because, like, you're wearing the shades now, and you definitely look way cool. Everybody looks cool with the shades, <laughs> right? But is that something you guys, uh, you say, hey, you take off the glasses to, to help you out? Yeah, we'll have somebody, if they're wearing a hat, we'll have them remove the hat, also remove the glasses. Uh, we'll do uh, uh, nystagmus tests and basically checks the eyes, so it's an involuntary jerking of the eyes. Um, once we proceed with that, if we feel we have enough clues on that, we'll proceed to more seated battery tests and, or tasks. And that consists of like, you know, sitting down, it's a palm pat, a finger to nose, and there's an another one that's uh, a hand coordination drill or a task. And that's how we can further determine the impairment level. Yeah, and, 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 and you don't want to even get to that point, right? So what do you tell folks? Just make sure you're, you're not, uh, that you know your limit? Absolutely, know your limit, stay hydrated with water. You know, water's gonna help get dehydrated, <clears throat> excuse me, the water will, you know, thin out your blood yeah. when you're dehydrated, so the alcohol impairment could be more than what you're normally used to being out in the sun. There you go. All right, great tips. Thank you so much, uh, Officer Craig here, or Officer Craig Baker. Uh, so there you go, some great tips on there. We want people to have a good time, but just be smart about it. Have a plan in place before you go out there and make sure you have plenty of water and food as well, Avery. Yeah, water's always good, especially when you're on the boat and in the sun, having a good time. So hopefully everybody stays safe this weekend because it is gonna be a nice weekend to be out on the water. A very nice weekend indeed, yes. All right, thanks Marco. Go have fun, see if uh, he'll zoom zoom you across the water. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the